The gospel reading that we have this evening is actually part of the Last Supper discourse that took place the night before Jesus died. And that Last Supper discourse in John's gospel goes for almost three chapters. But it's a very, very re beautiful reflection of the heart of Christ. That evening before he died, he was sharing the, his deepest thoughts with his disciples there. He was telling them the things that he really wanted them to know and that they would experience within their life and that they would not just remember, but that they would act upon. But those words in the Last Supper discourse are not just for the apostles then, but as John shares them with us, they are for each and every one of us. And those words of Jesus this evening are not easy to understand, and yet they are so very important. He says, you know, if you love me, you'll keep my word. And the word that I give is not mine, but that of the Father. But if you keep my word, I will come, we will come and dwell with you. Jesus has a great desire to truly dwell with us. And dwelling with us is, is much more than just walking by our side. Dwelling is much more than just sharing space together. That whole notion of dwelling is to being one with. That Jesus comes to, wants to dwell with us. And he said if we accept his word, then he and the Father will come and dwell with us that indwelling of the Holy Trinity within our very life, within our body, our soul. And the word that he's talking about there is his message of God's love and mercy. If we truly accept the word, not just with our head, but with our heart, with our life, then we are transformed. For the word of Christ is a transformative word. And it brings about a whole new relationship with God the Father, God the Son, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he promises the Spirit, the Spirit who will teach us and remind us of all these things. That Spirit whom we received in baptism. That Spirit that dwells within us. That Spirit with whom we were confirmed in confirmation. Is that Spirit of truth, that Spirit of love. Again, a transformative spirit within our lives. But we are called to truly allow that spirit to work within us. The indwelling of Christ within our hearts, within our lives, is one that is manifested in many ways, but no way greater than the Eucharist that we share in each Sunday, wherein Christ shares his word with us, that word of truth, that word of God's mercy, that word of love, and not only shares that word, but shares with us his own body and blood, his very self, to dwell within us, to draw us ever more deeply into union with him. But it requires that acceptance, that openness to that word of truth, the word become flesh in Christ Jesus. And then Jesus goes on and he promises that he will give us peace. We all yearn for peace. We yearn for peace certainly within our world, but also we yearn for peace within our relationships and within our own hearts and minds. And Jesus says, I'll give you peace, but not as the world gives peace. The world's peace is one of a lack of hostilities, uh, a cessation of animosities is what the world's peace is about. You think about the Cold War that was there, and we said that was a time of peace, mainly because we weren't shooting at each other or throwing bombs at each other. But Jesus said, my peace is different from that peace of the world. My peace is a peace that truly brings reconciliation that brings wholeness, that brings about safeguard living. It brings about a transformation into the brokenness of our lives. We all have brokenness within our lives. There's not one of us who doesn't experience some brokenness 
whether it's the brokenness of relationships, the brokenness of illness, the brokenness of sin, the brokenness of disappointments. There's always some brokenness within our lives. But Jesus says, I want to bring you a peace that heals brokenness, that brings about true healing and brings about that deeper sense of well-being. And that is with an awareness that we're never alone in this world. Jesus doesn't promise us the rose garden. He doesn't say we're not going to have problems and difficulties. We're not going to have challenges in relationships. We're not going to have some stresses and tensions. We're not going to have illness. And yes, we're even going to have death. All of those things are realities for us. But he says in the midst of that, if we truly know the presence of God's love, if we know the presence of God's mercy, that we will be at peace. I'm reminded of the words of one of the great mystics, mystics, Hildegard of Bingham, who said very simply, God is with us, all is well. God is with us, all is well. If we can remember that in the midst of the challenges of our life, in the midst of the times that things aren't in our control, when things seem to be spinning in so many different directions, when there's pain and there's suffering, if we can only be reminded, God is with us, all is well, because that is God's peace. God will make all things work together for good for those who love him. God is with us. All is well.